Hello people, welcome back. Question is from gate 2006 exam. It was asked for two marks. So let me first read the statement. Then I'm going to explain it. In the 4B, 5B encoding scheme, every four bits of data are encoded in a five bit code word. It is required that the code words have at most one leading and at most one trailing zero. How many such code words are possible? Okay, you can have a look at these options. They are 14, 16, 18 and 20. Now they're discussing about this scheme. What is this scheme? Okay, let's do one thing. Let us first solve this question. Then I'll discuss uh, about the scheme in like five minutes. Okay, so first just forget what is all this. What is 4B? What is 5B? Why this scheme is used? Where is it used? Okay, leave it. For now, let's solve this question. They are saying at most one leading and at most one trailing zero is allowed. At most one means no zero or one zero. So only these two possibilities are allowed in trailing zeros as well as leading zeros. Okay. So you can have at most one zero in beginning and at most one zero in ending. That means such a case is allowed. Now you cannot have a zero here because that will give you two leading zeros. That means you have to fix this bit to one. Also you have to fix this bit to one. Okay. Now because we have five bit code words, only one bit is left that can be anything. It can be either zero or one. Okay, so this such a pattern is according to the given conditions at most one leading and at most one trailing zeros. What if you have no leading zeros? That means the code word begins with one. It satisfies the condition of at most one leading zeros. Okay. In that case, we can have anything here. We can have anything here also. And what about the ending zeros? They can be, there can be either no zero or one zero. Let us take the case of one zero. Okay. If this bit is zero, this second last bit has to be one. Second last bit will be one because you cannot have two zeros in the ending. So this bit will be fixed to one. In this case, you have two choices. This bit can be of your choice as well as this one can be of your choice. Similarly, there will be case of zero, one. Okay. If in starting you have a zero and in ending you have a one. So here it will be one. It will be fixed to one. And these two bits can be of your choice. Now the last case is you have a one in beginning and you have a one in ending. So one. 1. See, you have at most one leading zeros. The condition is satisfied because no zero falls under that condition only. Here also you have at most one trailing zeros. So this bit, it can be of your choice. This one also can be of your choice and this one also can be of your choice. You can write anything on these three places. So how many total combinations are there? This can either be zero or one. So you can have two such patterns that can be generated from here. Two choices are for this bit and there are two choices for this bit. That means two raised to the power two, which is four. So four patterns can be generated from here. Similarly, four patterns can be generated from here. And from this, the last option, you can generate eight patterns because it is two choices here. 2 here and 2 here. So 2 power 3 will be 8. So this is 12, 16, 16 plus 2 is 18. That means total 18 code words are possible. They were asking how many code words are possible. So answer to this question is 18. We have found out the answer. You will get marks for this. But we don't know what is the scheme. Okay. So only one question was asked in gate exam that is from 2006. So it is not very important and probably you don't know about this scheme. 
सो लेट मी एक्सप्लेन इट सी वॉट एवर इज आर डेटा इज नॉट सेंट एज इट इज इट हैज टू बी इनकोडेड इन टू सिग्नल्स वायर्स कैन कैरी सिग्नल्स और मोर स्पेसिफिकली वी कोड इट इन टू सम डिजिटल सिग्नल इफ आर डेटा इज जीरो वन जीरो जीरो वन वन ओके यू कैन सेट अ लो वोल्टेज फॉर स्पेसिफाइंग दैट डेटा बेट इज जीरो एंड यू कैन सेट अ हाई वोल्टेज फॉर स्पेसिफाइंग दैट डेटा बेट इज वन दैट मीन्स दिस सिग्नल कुड लुक लाइक दिस जीरो सॉरी इट इज जीरो देन वन देन डबल जीरो देन डबल वन ओके so these are the clock signals okay one clock pulse second third fourth and in that respective clock pulses the values are 0 1 00 00 1 okay but there are a lot of problems in this scheme let us not discuss about all the drawbacks let us only discuss the major one that we require for explaining 4b 5b that drawback is If you have multiple zeros or multiple ones, the receiver cannot know how many ones were there exactly. Suppose in this scheme you are trying to send continuous stretch of ones, what will the signal look like? The signal will look something like this. Okay, the voltage is continuously high. That means there are ones, but how many? Suppose the sender is trying to send suppose sender is trying to send eight ones the signal is 111111111111 yeah suppose sender is trying to send 10 ones but if the receiver's clock is not perfectly synchronized that means these clock signals are sender's clock okay if receiver's clock is a bit slow suppose this is the receiver's clock it will see there are only three ones for this much time the signal is high that means first one second one and third one that's it so we cannot send continuous ones and similarly you can understand continuous zeros will also be a problem okay to just solve these problems we have various encoding schemes there is manchester encoding differential manchester encoding nrz rz there are a lot of schemes and the scheme that we are going to discuss today is nrz specifically inverted type If you want to know more about this scheme, watch my theory lectures. I am not explaining it in detail. I am just explaining it that you get to know what is 4B, 5B, and why is this required. Okay, so NRZ stands for non-returning to zero. Why is it called so? If you want answer to this question, that why are we naming it in such a way NRZ? For that, you can watch my theory lectures. I am not going to explain it all again, because for giving answer to this question i have to explain rz returning to zero only after getting to know about rz scheme you'll get to know that why is it called non returning to zero okay anyways it's a very simple scheme in this scheme we say whenever you want to transmit a one just change the value of signal whenever you want to transmit a zero keep the signal as it is see in such a scheme if you want to send all ones suppose now you want to send all ones in this scheme how many ones were received is a problem for uh, receiver okay but in this scheme how many ones were received is not a problem for receiver because suppose initially the value of signal was high you want to send a one you will just change the value of signal make it from high to low that means this one is a one okay 
देन अगेन नेक्स्ट बेट इज वन जस्ट चेंज द वैल्यू अगेन चेंज द वैल्यू अगेन चेंज द वैल्यू अगेन चेंज द वैल्यू अगेन चेंज द वैल्यू सो बिकॉज फ्रॉम लो टू हाई देन हाई टू लो लो टू हाई दिस दीज थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग दैट मीन्स ईच एंड एवरी बिट हेयर इज वन ओके नाउ सपोज यू वॉन्ट टू सेंड सम जीरो डोंट चेंज द वैल्यू दिस सिग्नल वॉज हाई कीप इट हाई अगेन यू वॉन्ट टू सेंड अ जीरो कीप इट हाई अगेन यू वॉन्ट टू सेंड अ जीरो कीप इट हाई सो ऑल ऑफ दीज बिट्स आर जीरो यू कैन सी हाफ ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम इज सॉल्व दैट मीन्स सिंक्रोनाइजिंग दीज वन इज नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज द रिसीवर विल वेरी इजिली गैस दैट फर्स्ट क्लॉक सिग्नल इज हेयर बिकॉज द ट्रांजिशन इज हैपनिंग so these clock signals will be guessed by the receiver even if its clock is not in perfect synchronization still these bits can be interpreted correctly but what about zeros now you have a continuous stretch of zeros and for that signal will not change this nrc scheme says whenever you want to send a one invert the signal and whenever you want to send a zero keep it as it is okay so this high voltage represents zero suppose you want to send zeros after this one then the signal will be as it is that, that means if the voltage was earlier low keep it low only okay so it is not fixed that zero is represented by high or low that is not sure okay suppose what i'm saying is suppose after this you want to send a one so for sending a one you will change the value After this, if you want to send zeros, you will keep it as it is. Okay. So here zeros are high, here zeros are low. Now the problem is kind of solved to fifty percent. We can synchronize the ones, but we cannot synchronize the number of zeros. We don't know how many zeros were actually sent by the sender. For this, we use the encoding called four B slash five B. Okay. this encoding's whole and sole purpose is to reduce the number of zeros if in your data you have lot of zeros suppose the original data is something like this so if you use 4b slash 5b encoding on this data you are not going to get more than 3 continuous zeros ever that means it will be transformed in such a way that at most three continuous zeros will be allowed the actual scheme allows three continuous zeros okay for now just believe it that actual scheme allows three zeros but it won't allow four zeros see the first four bits are all zeros this scheme says divide the original data into four four bits and encode it into five five bits so take the first four bits encode it into five bits take the next four bits encode it into five bits and encoding is done in such a way that you won't have more than three zeros something like this will be encoded okay for all zeros maybe this is the pattern i don't exactly remember and you don't even need to just learn it it can be searched online you can just search 4b slash 5b encoding table you'll see a one to one mapping between all of these numbers like for example if four bits are 0 1 0 1 what are the five bits in that mapping you can see all of that stuff it's not required actually the thing is you won't have more than three continuous zeros now continuous ones was never a problem because we are using nrzi continuous zeros was a problem but the data that we actually send will never contain more than 3 continuous zeros 3 continuous zeros can be easily guessed okay that means by the length of this signal you can easily guess that there might have been 3 zeros it's not a problem the problem is when zeros are like you have 1000 zeros or 100 zeros or more or very large number of continuous zeros okay and uh, one more point c here in actual scheme they are allowing maximum up to 3 continuous zeros but the question is slightly modified in this question they are uh, forming the question in such a way 
that at most two zeros are allowed. Okay. In real scheme, the actual scheme that is used, they are only allowing up to three. Question allows only up to two. Let us see how is question only allowing two zeros. Suppose this is the data that we want to encode. Step one is just divided into chunks of four four bits. These are the first four bits. We want to encode it. The scheme says the one that is given in question. It says you can have at most one leading and at most one trailing zeros. We want to have continuous zeros. So I am saying that this four bits they will encode be encoded in such a way that one leading and one trailing zero is there. You remember that, right? Okay. The first uh, possibility was zero zero and one one. This bit was of your choice. Okay. Now I am saying these second four bits were also encoded in this way only. See, we are trying to bring maximum number of zeros, but you can have at most two continuous zeros. Okay, because this bit has to be one, and this bit will also be one. So whatever you keep on doing, you will get at most two continuous zeros. One question arises: What if such a pattern is allowed? That means some of you might ask: Suppose for these four bits, the encoding was one, one, and here it has three zeros. We are having three continuous zeros. No. Answer to this question is: We have total eighteen encodings in this scheme that is given in question, but we are going to use only sixteen of them. This this pattern it can be rejected. Why are we going to use only sixteen? Because for one to one mapping from four bits to five bits, you require only sixteen encodings because four bits can generate sixteen patterns, five bits can generate 32 patterns out of these 32 we are keeping only 18 patterns as valid okay so from these four bits we are generating 16 patterns they have to be mapped to these 18 that means two patterns are extra one of them is this one which will be rejected because we want at most two continuous zeros even if you allow this pattern still it's not a problem because at most three continuous zeros is not a very big deal. Okay, so in question, I think they are trying to avoid three continuous zeros, but that cannot be like just said very surely because maybe they are allowing this. Who knows? Okay, so answer to this question was what were they asking? I just forgot. Yeah, they were asking total number of uh, code words. So they are 18. So I just forgot to mention one point in question. They are saying that only up to one leading zero and up to one trailing zero is allowed. But in reality, we allow up to two trailing zeros. That means for any four bits, such a pattern could be possible. Okay. For example, pattern for two is ending with two zeros. If you want to encode two, that means zero, zero, one, zero. If you want to encode these four bits in reality if you check it online the five bit pattern will be ending with two zeros okay but in question they are slightly modifying the definition they are saying we'll allow maximum up to one zero only okay so we'll go according to the question if they're defining it just believe it and solve accordingly okay